An alternative approach to detect local clusters is based on the local G statistics. These were developed by um, Art Geddes and Keith Ord in a number of papers in the early 1990s. In a strict sense, the G statistic, the GI and GI star statistics, are not ELISA because there is no proportional local global connection, but they are nevertheless very useful for detecting spatial clusters. The rationale behind the tests is slightly different, unlike the local Moran, which is based on a cross-product statistic idea. The GI and GI star statistics are based on a point pattern analysis logic, which we'll talk about in a few weeks. So the two tests are basically the same except that the GI star includes the value at the location itself in the statistic, whereas the GI statistic does not. Let's look at the, at the GI statistic first. The form of a statistic is a very simple ratio of, for each location, the spatial lag, in essence, the sum over J of Wij xj, divided by the sum over j for all values in the system except the value at i. So the location, unlike the Moran's i, the local Moran's i, the value at the location itself is not included in either numerator or denominator. Uh, recall that the local Moran's i is a product of z at i with the spatial lag the GI statistic, there's no product. It's simply the spatial lag part. So the numerator is the spatial lag, the weighted average of the neighbors, and the denominator is the sum of all values except the value at i. So we have, as before, we have our statistic. How do we get inference for this statistic? Um, we can go through the same exercise as we did for Moran's i and derive the moments under null hypothesis of randomization. But as for the local Moran, this is not very reliable. And a much more robust inference can be based on the same conditional permutation approach that we saw for the local Moran I, the local Moran. So what is the output of this then? It is, again, just like for the local Moran, a significance map and a cluster map. However, unlike what is the case in the local Moran, there's only two colors. There's the red color for high hotspots and the blue color for low cold spots. And we can do exactly the same things as we did before. We can look at this cluster map at different p-values. The p-values are pseudo p-values. They're not analytical p-values. And then we can also add the neighbors to the clusters and, and so on. So this visualization part is exactly the same as for the local Moran. The main difference is that the GI and also the GI star statistics do not pick up uh, local outliers because there's no product part to it. So they are not, um, that contrast cannot be picked up by the statistics. Okay, that's a GI statistic. It's the lesser used of the two. The other one is the GI star statistic, and that is actually um, not just useful in, in general, but it's also useful in a special case of binary dependent, binary variables of interest uh, as a sort of joint, local joint count statistic. So the difference between the GI and the GI star is that the GI star includes the value at location i in both numerator and denominator. So what does that mean? It means that the numerator is no longer the spatial lag, but it also includes the value at i in the summation. And that raises the question of how much weight do we give the value at the location itself relative to the neighbors? In a spatial lag, we don't have to worry about that. We typically weigh the neighbors equally, so the spatial lag is an average of the value of the neighbors. When we introduce the value at the location itself, do we give it equal weight to the neighbors or equal weight to 
each of the neighbors, uh, that uh, is something for which there is no one answer. It's a matter of sensitivity analysis. And typically, the uh, weights are adjusted so that it's an averaging of all the values, both at the location as well as the neighbors. So that's a numerator. The denominator, very interestingly, sums over all the values, so that doesn't change. So the only part in this local statistic that changes by locality is the summation in the numerator of the value at the locality together with its neighbors. So this is a, a slightly different statistic than the GI statistic, and we can use it as a local joint count statistic because that basically measures how likely it is that you have a one at a location together with ones at neighboring location. It's not really useful for zeros, but for ones it is, um, because we seem simply add them up. And then we see, um, we can, through the permutation analysis, we can check whether a grouping of ones at that particular location is likely under the null hypothesis of spatial randomness. And if it's not likely, then we reject the null and we actually have a local cluster of ones. In general, this applies to any um, continuous variables as well. Inference, same way. You can do it analytical. It's not recommended. The permutation approach, the conditional per permutation approach, is uh, really the way to go. So uh, the output of this, again, a significance map shown on the top, and, and you will notice that is very similar to what we had for the GI statistic, and then the cluster map at the bottom. Again, only two colors, um, red for the high for the hot spots, and blue for the low for the cold spots. Okay, how do we interpret this statistic? Um, just like for the local Moran, we only deal with significant values. So the areas that are in gray or white gray, we don't care about them. Even though they have statistics, they're not significant, so we don't care about their sign. We don't care about their magnitude. I can't emphasize this enough because there is software out there that maps all the local Moran or all the GI statistics, and that's really very misleading. Only the ones that are significant should be considered. The others should be ignored. As I mentioned, the positive GI or GI star statistic points to local clustering of high values. And otherwise, it's a cluster. In other words, it's a cluster of high values or what we call a hotspot. And the negative GI or GI star statistic is a local cluster of low values or a cold spot. Uh, as mentioned, because there is no cross product, the statistic is not designed to detect spatial outliers. So how do the two approaches compare then, the local Moran versus the G statistic? As it turns out, you will find in most applications that it's very similar. Uh, however, because the G statistic does not consider spatial outliers, it's most useful when you don't have any. So when the focus is really on hot spots and cold spots. Uh, because it doesn't consider spatial outliers, um, that may be important in, in some circumstances. And oftentimes, the interest is on the spatial outliers because they are so different from their neighbors and they warrant further attention. The um, low drawback of the local Moran, at least in its pure form, is that you need to combine it with the Moran uh, scatterplot type classification to get an indication of the type of spatial autocorrelation. So positive spatial autocorrelation could be high, high, or low. Low, uh, Negative local Moran spatial autocorrelation could be high, low, or low, high. So you need this additional piece of information. But for example, in Geoda, that is uh, done behind the scenes automatically. So you, you basically have all this information. As I mentioned, the two are uh, fairly similar in terms of results. If we compare going, continuing with our Nepal uh, life expectancy example, uh, 
we see the local Moran map cluster map on the top and the local GI star cluster map on the bottom and they essentially identify the same locations as significant however as you see um, in the local GI star one of the spatial outlier the low high spatial outlier is included in the hot spot in the high high uh, cluster and conversely the high-low spatial outliers are included in the cold spot outline, uh, cluster. So basically, very similar approaches. The main difference between the two is that the local moraine is attuned to spatial outliers. The local GI and GI star statistics are not, and they focus exclusively on hot spots and cold spots. Uh, one side effect is that you can use the local GI star statistic as a form of local joint count statistic. And next we close with some issues and interpretation matters.